It has been a full 18 months since ChatGPT was introduced, and the world is still revolving. However, anxiety about AI is starting to really hinder progress in the AI world. We're starting to see a lot of people have AI anxiety. This is nothing new. Uh, ChatGPT's arrival was met with a mix of awe at its technological advancement and anger at the blazed nature of its launch and what it could do. Some felt like there had been little consideration of how unprepared society was for this innovation. Students could use it to cheat on essays. Disinformation could spread like wildfire and would produce toxic, racist, and sexist content. And everyone would suffer doom and gloom. We were all going to die. It's going to destroy us all. It's going to make robots. That, yeah, I think you get where I'm going with this. The doom and gloom scenario is just not true. In response, exploring the implications of AI is undoubtedly one of the many logical choices for product managers aiming to generate innovations. This course of action aligns sensibly with broader global society. According to a website, therap.com, Google Trends data indicated a notable increase in global web searches for the term ChatGPT in mid-December of 2022, followed by a surge starting in early 2023, months after ChatGPT's November 2022 launch. The search interest peaked around March of 2023, coinciding with Google's launch of BARD, uh, its response to the OpenAI tool, which is now Gemini. Almost immediately, there were cries for it to be put back in its box. Instead, the EU, acting as the world's moral compass, sprang into action and drafted the beginnings of what today is the EU Artificial Intelligence Act the world's first comprehensive regulatory framework for AI. Let's talk about the truth. There were a group of tech leaders who met to discuss the impact of AI on their daily lives. Uh, I wasn't present for this meeting, but uh, I did read this extensive article about it. And it was talking about how AI would have an impact on our respective organizations. By AI, they were referring specifically to generative AI. At the Harbor Hotel in central Bristol, they gathered around a long rectangular table with a crisp white tablecloth. As the courses came and went, they discussed coping with the high velocity of change-driven AI, balancing disparities between leadership and individual contributors, and the environmental, social, and economic impacts AI would have. In the room, they had a good range of organizations, from large and well-established to smaller startups, with a good mix of experience when it came to AI. When answering a question, on a scale of 1 to 10, how dependent is your business on AI? There was a clear divide in the room. About two-thirds of the room were on the lower end of the scale, one to three, and the other third hit the higher end at six to eight. The haves and the have-nots. I think that's the part of the story that everybody's missing. Organizational size doesn't seem to be a factor in predicting the propensity uh, to innovate using AI. Instead, it's driven by the organization's urgency to solve a problem that AI could address. The greater the problem, the more likely it is they've attempted to use AI to solve it. For instance, despite having been part of a large and highly regulated organization, a fire safety engineering team could successfully use AI to accurately search for and retrieve specific sections of documents to help them complete their assessments. When it comes to generating content, the consensus is that AI is not quite there yet. Despite this, many disciplines are using it to speed up their content generation workflow. AI is great for sparking ideas, generating outlines, providing feedback, providing initial drafts, etc. As an assistive technology overseen and refined by humans, AI has been welcomed and has done incredible things. Some still think it's just a fad. I was very surprised to hear some people describe how they had to demonstrate the technology to their peers or to their board. According to the people they demonstrated to, they had to open ChatGPT, put in a prompt and had to explain that the response that came back was not pre-written. Other people on the board have been under the impression ChatGPT was just a new form of search with a search engine. On the other end of the spectrum were those people who saw it as a silver bullet. With all the hype, you cannot curb their enthusiasm. In this case, some members in the room felt like they had developed dual personalities. Uh, they underplay AI's potential and highlight its risks, but outside are one of the biggest advocates for what it can do. Most, most people around the table were cautiously optimistic, which is exactly the right place where we should probably be.
For some people in the room, AI was central to their product. In fact, one product was designed specifically to mitigate bias introduced by AI, AI Inception. Many were introducing AI by running controlled prototype experiments to demonstrate potential applications and justify funding. Others were using AI tools, but had not directly implemented AI into their product or service. As a head of product, the pressure to add AI to your product is immense at this point. Everywhere you look, products both old and new are jumping on the bandwagon. One person described how a competitor now advertises their tool as powered by AI, when in fact, it just has a couple of if statements here and there. Today, powered by, by AI seems to instantly make a product more desirable. But the group pondered ideas that challenged this notion. In fact, what made the most sense was starting to develop a tiered pricing model with the cheapest tier using AI, where the highest risk lies. If you want to work, if you want work to be fully created by a human, you're going to have to pay more. There's a lot of hidden risk that's not being talked about when it comes to AI. When AI is introduced into sensitive fields, it can perpetuate biases, compromise privacy, or erode essential human skills and decision making. In HR, for example, AI can lead to discriminatory practices if not properly managed. In therapy, the lack of human empathy and a potential for data breaches pose significant risks. In a justice system, AI's use to, in predictive policing and risk assessment could result in a future reality so vividly depicted uh, in a movie Minority Report, if you remember that one. I think it was back in 2002. It was also mentioned that the NHS is very excited about AI. This should come as no surprise. The service is stretched to its limits by looking to AI for help. It will be imperative that they get balance between risk and reward right. You need to get that correct. In a world where AI is just beginning to be introduced, open AI is like dawn's first light, illuminating the path ahead with the promise of new beginnings. Everything outside of that path is uncharted territory. Inevitably, open AI has to step into those shadows in order to strengthen and broaden the beam's reach. This has left some feeling like they are in constant state of anxiety as they navigate in the unknown. So much so that it prompted an open letter from OpenAI employees to warn uh, of a culture of risk. Improper use of AI has already resulted in several court cases, but the real change will happen when there's a titanic level disaster that drives a step to change in regulation. As a product manager, it's like walking on thin ice, yet the fear of missing out is still very real. As desserts at this meal were cleared away and they approached the end of their two hour lunch mark, they ended their session with some final thoughts from each person. There were two that stuck out from the rest. Wow, we're not as backwards as we thought we were, and it's good to see where we are all at. If you're a product manager and you're falling under pressure to add AI to your product, fear not. There are lots of us out there who are biding our time, watching it closely as it evolves, looking for the right use case, and feeling quite confident that when the time does come, it will be implementing AI to solve real problems and not just for the sake of implementing AI to implement AI. What I can tell you is one of the most successful product offerings that we at Agile Dad have ever launched is our integration of AI in Agile. It is an incredible workshop and it's practical application of AI in an Agile setting. What I can tell you is it has been an incredible run. Everyone who has successfully piloted and taken a class has benefited from it. And we've received overwhelming positive feedback about the sensitivity we have towards bias and ethical use of AI, but we also have uh, received incredible feedback regarding the results that it produced. We can show people using AI how to generate everything from brainstorming to, uh, to outcome-based road mapping, to visually uh, depicting the roadmap, to uh, template backlog generation. There's so many things it can do. Creating personas, uh, making sure we break down things, uh, work breakdown structures or breaking down backlogs into consumable tasks. There's so many things that can be done, and it's an exciting view ahead. I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm not fearful of AI, and you probably shouldn't be either. That's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have a topic you want us to discuss, learn more at AgileDad.com. We'd love to hear from you. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.